Hello everyone and welcome to the first episode of Sonic 3 and Knuckles, hosted as Darby Shadow and we've got two guests starting up. In first, it's TK the Hedgehog and second, Death Tour 2 3. So what's up? What is up? Long time Hello. no see, guys. Long time no see. Oh, yeah, we're two months late this day. Yeah. Indeed, two months late. Because, you know, everyone has to have a holiday. And we're back. So, first okay. off, we're starting off with Super Sonic. Running down the first climax of the story that we have played through Sonic 3 first, so everyone should be well aware of the story of that. So, guys, with Sonic 3 attached to Sonic and Knuckles this time, what do you expect to see different? Uh, first of all, I'd like to point out that the music for a lot of the uh, menu items, the uh, invincibility and things like that, music has changed to the Japanese version. The original Sonic 3 music that was, um, or not, I'm sorry, not original, but it was the new Sonic 3 music that was composed, so they used it in Sonic um, 3 and Knuckles. We're going to see Knuckles, a playable character throughout the entire game now. Um, yeah. Also, we're going to see a new story arc that we didn't get to see in Sonic right, so. A new story arc? We are going to see some new uh, additions to the pre-existing story of Sonic 3. And um, it's going to kind of put the game into perspective. These are, these are two halves to one game, pretty much. Uh, so with the story perspective, it actually connects the two games much more easier for the gamer to actually know what the story is about. Right. It's pretty clever. So with the special stages, you have to go through the same special stages as we did in Sonic 3 and Sonic and Knuckles. For the first half of the game, we do. Yes. Hmm. Same, so... With Sonic and Knuckles, they have different special stages. Oh yes. Um, once we get to the second half of the game, um, you'll see a huge difference in the special stages and the way that they work. Um, going from regular Chaos Emeralds to getting Super Emeralds, and yeah. um, you know the way that the Dimension Rings work instead of actually taking you special stage or just giving you 50 rings, it takes you to the hidden palace. Oh, I see. Is uh, the hidden palace where the master emerald is kept, the knuckles. Correct. The, uh, pretty much the classic day Angel Island Mystic Ruins type of thing. In fact, we're on Angel Island right now, uh, this particular stage. So it's the only this stage that's Angel Island only. But they have a stage is off or around it. They are all on the quote unquote floating island. You know, that's what it's called. Like the, <laughs> yeah. um, modern day Sonic fans may know the entire island as Angel Island. Yeah, because I was thinking that this stage is just called Angel Island just because you're just in the arrival point of Angel Island. Zone. But the other stages are connected to Angel Island as well. Correct. Yeah, cool. So with Knuckles being shown in Sonic and Knuckles, but now he's going to be shown in Sonic 3 and Knuckles as a playable character, what does this mean to the gamer? Or to the player, I should say? We're going to see some more diverse gameplay. You know, Knuckles can glide, he can climb walls, he's red, he can punch the rocks, he's red, he can jump a little short. <laughs> Yeah, Knuckles is uh, definitely different than Sonic and Tails. Um, this is where we get to see his personality. Like I said, he's really red. And, um, you know, red and whatnot. But yeah, we'll, we'll see a lot more of Knuckles um, in this game. And why, you know, we actually find out why he's chasing Sonic. And why he's preventing Sonic from collecting the emeralds. Okay. First, let's just take down the story much more because I actually wanted to 
wanted to know something about it because many people have been saying that Knuckles was the first antagonist, as I said, like being an anti-hero of the Sonic series, but I do see that claim to be false because Knuckles was just protecting the Master Emerald. He wasn't trying to um, destroy Sonic because before that Sonic was an enemy at first, right? Correct. And see, the thing is, um, you know, when you're young and when you're just a kid, like how I was, um, you just see Knuckles. How long ago was that? You just see Knuckles. <laughs> <laughs> that was 20 years ago, exactly. Or I'll say it be 20 years ago this Christmas when I first played um, Sonic 2. Yeah. You see Knuckles. Um, you know, he's just attacking Sonic. So you automatically assume, oh man, he's badass. But you see this little smirk on his face. And it's like, oh, well, you know, he just really thinks he's just all that. <laughs> he, he has to be one of Sonic's rivals, but no, he's really just an ancient echidna protecting his home and uh, the power of the Emerald. Yeah, because as a kid, you just to see clear on the screen that every time you go to Knuckles, he's always trying to pull you, pull you down to another route. You don't really go ask the story straight away as you rightly explained and because many people thought that Shadow was copying Knuckles his type of trait coming to the franchise as being a villain at first then becoming a hero but Shadow has his own way of becoming a villain at first from Sonic Adventure 2 story well the difference between Shadow and Knuckles they're well actually they do both have a lot of similarities they're both pretty much enigmas Knuckles um, even though he's definitely classified as one of Sonic, Sonic's, you know, pals now. Uh, definitely not. One of Sonic's, like, best friends. That's totally Tails' territory, but, um, you know, Knuckles is an acquaintance. He, he's, him and Sonic have an alliance, pretty much. Knuckles is like, hey, if you need me, I'm there. Sonic is like, hey, if you need me, I'm there. Even though I said, forget all about your chaos and we gotta get to the Ark. Or, or the Master in Little Shards, if you guys remember that. Um, yeah. Sonic Adventure 2. But with Shadow, Shadow is also an enigma, but a lot of it was revealed in his personal game, Shadow the Hedgehog. Yeah. And, um, he's not... To me, Knuckles is still more mysterious than Shadow. We, we know everything about Shadow. We still don't really know about Knuckles. You know, we don't, we don't necessarily know about his clan, his race, his background. Um... Whereas we know Shadow was created for a purpose, and then he had a sub-purpose, and then choose his own destiny, blah blah blah, you know, it's like, bam, it's laid out right in front of us, but yeah. to me, Shadow is more of the anti-hero, he, his destiny is never defined, he can destroy the world, like it was predicted in Sonic 06, he can save the world, like he's done twice before, or yeah. three, three times before now, and um, well, four times before <laughs> with Sonic Heroes, mm -hmm. But, um, you know, Shadow can become a villain again. I don't think Knuckles can. He has no reason to. Yeah, that's very true. But as well as that, he came off as a simple character, Knuckles, that the only thing that he should only be included into the story was the Master Emerald, right? Right. And many people thought that was pointless. That he should only be included for the Master Emerald. If there's no Master Emerald, there's gonna be no Knuckles in the game. And as you've seen that before, that as soon as after Sonic Adventure 2 um, got released and then other games came out, every time you saw Knuckles as a pair, that there was no relevance to the Master Emerald at all in the story. So do you think that Cannon was screwed up there, or do you think that Cannon still followed um, normal for Knuckles? The canon has failed in recent years, um, but I will say this, I agree, um, on, to a certain extent. If Knuckles isn't in the game, then the Master Emerald needs to be mentioned, at least, because it's his job to protect it. If, he's not, if, it's, if the Master Emerald isn't in the game, then what the heck is going on? Knuckles' purpose is not being served here. Now, in Sonic Adventure 2, apparently the Emerald was a lot more mobile than it was in Sonic Adventure 1. 
and any other game, pretty much, because he could, like, just put it in his pocket, and, you know, he could carry it around <laughs> the galaxy or whatever. Um, but, you know, I think we should see the Master Emerald again. It should definitely serve a purpose. I think the Super Emerald should come back. Um, but, you know, things... I don't know, it's up to the writers if they're going to include that or not. I, I plan on taking my all my ideas, putting them together, and sending them to the writers. I mean, that's not going to get us anywhere, let's face it, but it's worth a shot, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because using the Moss Demo the games is to be able to control the power of the Chaos Emeralds, right? It's like, that's where how Chaos, the Chaos Emeralds control... Like be able to actually have the goodness and the heart in them, or the negative energy, because I always had this um, theory that me and my friend came up with that the chaos emeralds have always been used for dark purposes, because you know, chaos with the meaning of fear and disaster, and then mass them was the only way to actually nullify the effects of anything being negative put onto the actual person. So when Sonic actually puts on the chaos emeralds, it's that the master emerald is resisting the actual negative energy put onto Sonic, so he can actually become a good guy. That's a good way to, to put it. I mean, because um... as you've seen in uh, Sonic Adventure 1, that you know, when Chaos Zero, yeah, Chaos, um, delivers all the Chaos Symbols, he actually extracts all the en energy directly from the Chaos Symbols and not from the Mars Symbol. Right. Because he was a um, guardian, but he got released. He didn't need any power from the Mars Symbol, he just scattered all the powers from the Chaos Symbols for all the negative energy. Right, and you know, just like Tails said, you know, how Super, well, Tails said that Super Sonic neutralized Chaos, but when you think about it, the Master Emerald is what neutralizes the Chaos Emerald. Yeah, exactly. That's a good point. Do you think that it was explained quite well in Sonic 3 Knuckles of the purpose of what the Master Emerald did, like for nullifying the Chaos Emeralds, or you just think that it was just a precious emerald? that Knuckles just had to protect the out of. Well, a little bit of both. Actually, it is both. It's a ton of both because, first of all, yes, Knuckles does have to protect it because the second Dr. Eggman took that emerald, the island started to fall. Yeah. Second of all, um, the, the fact that the super emeralds are even in this game shows a great deal of what the Master Emerald can do to the Chaos Emeralds and, and how it influences them. Yeah. Because... Without... Should we say the spoilers? Because uh, I remember that there was one part later in the story that the robot of Dr. Robotnik actually uses the Master Emerald, right? For right. his source. Yeah, and what was the purpose of using that instead of the Chaos Emeralds? Well, for Dr. Eggman, the bigger the emerald, the more power. Um, however, he's always after the Chaos Emeralds as well, so I don't know. It could just be the fact that he got tired of looking for seven emeralds and just wanted to look for one really big one. <laughs> Alright, so we'll, we'll move on to that when we actually get closer to it, but as for now, just completed Angel Island completely and Knuckles pulled the trap on us and moved into Hydro Sea, so... Now, I think from Sonic 3, I must have said that I didn't like Hydro Sea so that much, but you did like it, right? Right. Did, well, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> Me and Water Station have a very... broken relationship. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't like Mario where you fall into the water and it's like, oh, I'm in the water, we fun, watch out for the fish. <laughs> no, 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 this is like crap, I'm in the water, what the flip do I do, oh my god. You know, <laughs> this is really, really different. Yeah, because it really just takes away your speed back, I'm guessing. Yeah, it does. Um, you can drown, unlike Mario. You can drown, unlike Mario. But most importantly, this stage is long, and <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but uh, every time I play, even today, I always hit that nine minute death timer of death. Um, 
before I can actually like get through the stage. I hit it at least one time because it's like, oh fudge, I drowned. Oh fudge, I'm in the water. Oh god, I'm moving slow. Gotta get go back and get the air bubble. Oh my gosh. And then it's just like I just spend way too much time on the stage, I guess. I find this stage only interesting for the locations of the Chaos Emeralds because the way how they actually put it into the game was pretty cool because there's some parts it's in the lower parts and some parts is in the highest room because I haven't been act 2 that you have to go on top of some platforms these spinning platforms actually reach one of the special stages which doesn't really require much speed it's just like typical platforming Ah uh, yes, my second complaint about that stage. <laughs> yeah, I didn't, yeah, I never really. I don't know if you guys remember my Sonic 3 playthrough, but I did not unlock Super Sonic by Hydrocity like Death to All does in this version. <laughs> yeah, like you can actually get pretty much up to seven Chaos Emeralds from Hydrocity if you know all the locations. Yeah, how did you do it, Jim? I mean, honestly, I couldn't, I can't do it. I'm just not gonna lie, I can't freaking do it. Do what? Collect all the freaking emeralds in Hydrocity, it's insane. <laughs> I played the game enough. So did I, Jim. I put 20 years into this game. <laughs> yeah, you went to Sega Arcade. <laughs> Pop the nickel and start playing. <laughs> nickel. <laughs> Wait, by the way, is that, did that ever happen? Like, you can go to the arcades and play this game. I know in the arcade games you can play the, like shooting games, racing games, buying games back in the 90s, but could you ever play a platforming game on the arcades? Not in my neighborhood. We had Pac-Man and um, games like Contra and Terminator and, you know, 90s popular games, like pop games. Like, um, I think Michael Jackson may have even been a uh, arcade title, Home Alone. You know, most Hollywood. What about the Moonwalk again? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Uh, you know, just the Hollywood type of games, pretty much. We, we didn't really have, um, couldn't play Sonic in, or Mario, or, you know, any of the good platforms. I think maybe back before I was even born, you may have been able to play, like, Frogger, but um, I, I do remember playing Centipede. <laughs> Centipede, oh yeah. Anyways, we're tackling through Sonic 3's route again with this boss and pretty much the easy way of killing the boss is just keep him jumping when he actually stops into the middle and he's about to drain you with the wind turbine. But still nothing new really from playing Sonic 3 Knuckles compared to Sonic 3 except for the music change, right? We played so far. There's the music change, there's... Uh... Uh, well, yeah, the music change. The physics are actually different. Believe it or not, I believe this one has a faster uh, processor than Sonic 1 and Sonic 2. Newer engine, I mean. Um, but yeah, yeah that's. Mm -hmm. Because well, if you're actually rolling down a really long slope, you can actually really feel the speed. It's way faster than both Sonic 1 and 2 combined, I would say. Right. But that's really disconnected to Sonic 3 that we have seen if, uh, when we saw you in the launch racer and it actually covers a lot of uh, slopes and stuff that you can actually really see the true speed of Sonic mm -hmm. from this game. I think that's the really only stage that really covers a lot of speed because most of these stages are well done with the platform. Yeah, that's true. Um, I remember, well, if you saw at the beginning of or at the end of Angel Island, kind of how um, when Jim, when you flew in the air, you know, towards the end of the stage, that's actually one of my favorite spots because just how fast he's going, he actually like fall, he flies in the air for a good like three or four seconds, and then he finally comes down. <laughs> you know, we didn't really get, we didn't get that in Sonic 2, and definitely not in Sonic 1. Oh yeah, that's true. So as a whole, then Sonic 3 and Knuckles was a game that felt much more similar to the Apple previous towers but also in a new way different in its own game. Right. Um, yeah, it's, it's definitely different. Um, 
I mean, the physics. Uh, they, they, the physics are inherited from Sonic 3, but at the same time, adding Knuckles is going to change things up a little bit because he's a lot slower than Sonic. Um, jumps, he can't jump as high as Sonic, I don't believe, and he definitely has some alternate paths where Sonic can't even get to, or Tails. So, to me, that element alone is kind of like the root of where Sonic Adventure got its concept from, where it's like multiple characters, yeah, they all feel, they may feel the same, but they all have their abilities, which makes them different, you know? Yeah. As, um, back to what you said about Knuckles being a bit slower, how can you actually realize that Knuckles is a bit slower than Sonic? You just feel it, really. I mean, yeah, he has a spin dash like Sonic, but, you know, when you're running... 